Hello everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today is Tuesday. Okay, before we get started, um, I have to give full credit where credit is due. I saw a video on uh, one of my new favorites, um, Bookjack, and he did a tag um, that was uh, three books that will destroy you and three books that will restore you. And I absolutely love the concept of that. And I said, I'm going to weaponize it and turn it into a tag. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this is the, this is the choose wisely tag. And again, um, I will link book Jack's channel down below. Make sure that you check it out. He has awesome content and, um, let's get this tag off the ground. It should be fun. Something different, you know, in the waiting for spring to roll around, waiting for summer to come in, you know, it could be a good way to get some good book recommendations. So um, what we're going to do is we're basically going to pick three books that have destroyed us and pair it with three books that restored us. Simple, right? Okay. So the first one everyone has heard. So I had to include these two just because they're so important in my reading history. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. Completely and utterly. If you've read it, you know, you know, if I know there's a lot of people out on booktube that are just getting into this book um, and just keep going, keep going. Don't give it up. Don't put it down. Keep going, keep going. I had, I did a vlog when I was reading this book and all the emotions that crept up when they crept up, I videoed and, um, yeah, it's one of those books that I wanted to throw it out of the house and across the Atlantic. Um, so that is one book that destroyed me. Now, a book that restored me is Charlie McKessie. It's the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. It is such a great tale. I will sell this book until I am dead. It is so, so good. Not just the paper book, the audio book. The audio book is fantastic. It's an hour out of your life and you will feel so much better. You will feel grounded. You will feel connected as a human being. It's perfect. I don't know what else to say. All right. That's for spot number one. Spot number two, My Dark Vanessa. That was a troublesome book. That book destroyed me. I wanted to stop reading it. I couldn't stop. I had to find out what happened and I had to keep going. Um, super tough subject matter. Again, um, about a student and her teacher and there are a lot of nasty things that are involved. There are a lot of um, questions that are asked and um you know is it love are the intentions good are the intentions bad there's a lot of layers to my dark vanessa my dark vanessa is a novel by kate elizabeth russell on goodreads it's got four and a half stars out of five new york times bestseller I'll read you the blurb in case you've never read it. Bright, ambitious, and yearning for adulthood, 15-year-old Vanessa Y becomes entangled in an affair with Jacob Strain, her magnetic and guileful 42-year-old English teacher. Amid the rising wave of allegations against powerful men, a reckoning is coming due. Strain has been accused of sexual abuse by a former student who reaches out to Vanessa, and now Vanessa suddenly finds herself facing an impossible choice Remain silent, firm in the belief that her teenage self willfully engaged in this relationship or redefine herself and the events of her past. But how can Vanessa reject her first love, the man who fundamentally transformed her and has been a persistent presence in her life? It's good. Hugely disturbing, but good. And to go with my dark Vanessa, I chose The Girl in the Red Coat. I read this a bunch of years ago, way before book two. The Girl in the Red Coat is by Kate Hammer. I gave this one four out of five stars. Newly single mom Beth has one constant gnawing worry that her dreamy eight-year-old daughter, Carmel, who has a tendency to wander off, will one day go missing. Then one day it happens on a Saturday morning, thick with fog, Beth takes Carmel to a local outdoor festival. They get separated from the crowd and Carmel's gone. Shattered, Beth sets herself on the grim and lonely mission to find her daughter, keeping re on relentlessly, even as authorities tell her that Carmel may be gone for good. Carmel, meanwhile, is on a strange and harrowing journey of her own to a totally unexpected place that requires her to live by her wits, while trying desperately to keep in her head at all times a vision of her mother. 
Alternating between Beth's story and Carmel's and written in gripping prose that won't let go, The Girl in the Red Coat is an utterly immersive story that is impossible to put down and impossible to forget. Really, really good. Um, I don't know how long ago I read this, but it's been a while. So that is my pairing for My Dark Vanessa. And lastly, oh, Joan Didion, A Year of Magical Thinking. <whistles> That's a toughie. It's a toughie because it's nonfiction. <whistles> toughie. The Year of Magical Thinking. Four and a half stars on Goodreads. It is a short book. Several days. I'll read you the blurb in case you don't know who Joan Didion. Well, if you don't know who Joan Didion is, y'all better start reading her because she's fantastic. We lost her last year. Um, there is a Netflix documentary about her be called "The Circle." The center shall not. The circle will not hold. The center will not hold. The center will not hold. It's lovely. Her nephew is the producer, um, and it shows her at home going through her experiences. She was a trailblazer back in the day and her spirit was just awesome. Like she partied with Jim Morrison in the doors. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, several days before Christmas, 2003, John Gregory Dunn and Joan Didion saw their only daughter, uh, Quintana fall ill with what seemed at first flu, then pneumonia, then complete septic shock. She was put into an induced coma she was put into an induced coma and placed on life support. Days later, the night before New Year's Eve, the uh, Dunns were sitting down to dinner after visiting the hospital when John Gregory Dunn suffered a f massive and fatal coronary. In a second, in a second, this close symbiotic partnership of 40 years was over. Her husband passed away at the dinner table. Yeah. This is Joan's description of making sense of what happened we've got layers of trauma going on here and um she attempts to make sense of quote the weeks then months that cut loose any fixed idea i ever had about death and illness about marriage and children and memory about the shallowness of the shallowness of sanity about life itself highly highly recommended this is the first book i ever read of joan didion and um, one that I will never forget. Paired with that, Story of Loss is a cute story about widows shacking up. This is fiction, and this is Our Souls at Night. Our Souls at Night is by Kent Haruf. This was made into a Netflix movie, I believe, with Jane Fonda and Robert Redford. Robert Redford and Jane Fonda. National bestseller. Uh, a spare yet eloquent, it's only 184 pages, a spare yet eloquent, bittersweet, yet inspiring story of a man and woman who in advanced age come together to wrestle with the events of their lives and their hopes for the imminent future. The couple, Addie and Louie, come to know each other better, their pleasures and their difficulties. A beautiful story of second chances unfolds. Aww. I guess this was the writer's last book. Wonderful. It's really, really cute. It's really, really cute. And it is a wonderful book. Um, to uh, reaffirm that love can happen at any time in your life. And you can find it in the most uh, unexpected places. So that is Our Souls at Night by Kent Harv. So that's an easy tag. So again, three books that destroyed you and three books that restored you. Try and pair them up. So um, again, Book Jack. His channel is listed down below. Feel free, do the tag. It's a quick, easy one. Make sure everyone um, follows and subscribes to Book Jack. I look forward to hearing everyone's answers. Should be fun. And that is the Choose Wisely book tag. All right, everyone. That is it here for me. I hope everyone is doing well. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, whether it be sooner or later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now.